Hey, I'm back once again, CISSP wannabes. My name is Colin Weaver. These are the IT Dojo CISSP practice questions of the day, where almost every single day I come at you with two brand new questions to help you as you continue to do your studies for your exam. So here comes question number one. Question number one today is you are designing a relational database and you want to make sure that the database that you design is going to be efficient and optimized and logical, uh, particularly as it relates to a data integrity perspective. Which of the following should be something that you follow or implement in order to go in and ensure or help ensure that that's actually going to be true? Your answer choices are there. Click on pause if you need to. Think about it. When you're ready, click play and we can talk it through. Okay, best answer choice here is called database normalization. Database normalization is the process that people who design databases will go through in order to make sure that their database is well-structured, well-formed, organized and is going to be one that is efficient and protects the integrity of the information that's in it. Um, it has technically there's what are called five normal forms of uh, 1NF, 2NF, 3NF. Um, almost always you only see the three normal forms actually discussed. There's the first normal, second normal, and third normal forms. There is a fourth and a fifth but I don't see anybody ever really talking about them that much but um, that's what's there for that. And heck, there might be more than that for all I know, but I've only ever heard of, the, uh, of five. But uh, by following these normal forms, you go in and design a database that, in essence, makes sense. Now, I'm oversimplifying. There's some links down below that talk about it in greater detail. But the process that you follow in terms of the design and layout of your database is called normalization. All right, question number two today. Which of the following? There's your list. Would you consider to be a preventive security control? Go ahead and look at that list, think about it, and then when you're ready, click on play, and we can figure it out. All right, let's look at each one of these. Uh, we are looking for a preventive control. Um, CCTV, closed circuit television, uh, would be most closely aligned with a detective control. Now, uh, sometimes people want to say that it's a deterrent or something like that, but I always kind of redirect people back to say, what's its primary function? What's its primary purpose? In the case of something like CCTV, it's to detect. So um, it is, that's where I would categorize that. Uh, the next one on the list is actually the right answer that we're looking for here, NTFS file permissions. Those are preventive by putting those controls in place, not too unlike the notion of, say, putting an access control list in place on a firewall or a router or file permissions on, say, a Windows server or in a Linux box. Uh, these file permissions go in and prevent people from doing things. So by going in and, say, um, denying somebody access or making use of the implicit deny, uh, that's on a list, uh, you prevent people from doing things that they're not supposed to be able to do, whether it's to read an object, write an object, delete an object, what have you. Next one on the list was data backups. That one's not correct because data backups are a corrective control. Uh, those are there for when things have gone bad and you need to get stuff back. So prevention didn't work. Your junk is gone, so now you need to correct. All right, other guy on the list, no trespassing signs. Those are more in the world of deterrence. Uh, they do not prevent somebody from climbing that fence, but they could deter somebody from climbing that fence. So, um, subtle distinction, but an important distinction nonetheless. And then the last choice on the list is a network-based intrusion detection system. Uh, the name is in the what it is. It's a detection system. It can go and detect when things are happening, but doesn't do a particularly good job at getting involved. Uh, the next evolution of intrusion detection systems, which of course are intrusion prevention systems, would cross over into the preventive category, um, but they would be both detective with an extra dose of prevention built into them, which also serves to illustrate that things aren't always black and white. Sometimes things can kind of fall into multiple categories, which unfortunately can sometimes make things confusing when you're trying to do this from an exam perspective. So hopefully ISC squared is cool when it comes to these kinds of concepts on the exam and doesn't give you ones that are particularly befuddling. Um, and you can go in and look at them, uh, which I hope this question does, and kind of to give it to you in a, in a pretty easy to figure out perspective where the only practical answer on this list is NTFS file permissions as far as being a preventive control. All right, thanks for being here. Two more questions done. Click the like button. The like button. There you go. Thank you. Um, see you tomorrow.